Let's talk chemical equilibria. And the reason we like teaching chemical equilibria and rates of reaction um, one after the other is because, first of all, they go hand in hand, and secondly, kids tend to get them confused. So let's first talk about the definition of dynamic equilibria. Okay, so just in a second. In this graph here, do you see that it, got, it went flat? And in the previous graph here. Now, in rates of reaction questions, when the graphs go flat like this, it means they have stopped. They have run to completion. When we see graphs in chemical equilibria that are flat, it doesn't mean they've run to completion. 99% of the time, it means that, means that they've reached dynamic chemical equilibria. And that is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So there is no macroscopic change. No macroscopic change. We can't see a change happening. On a microscopic level, we will see particles breaking up and forming other particles and vice versa. But on the macroscopic level, we won't see any change. Okay? So let's talk about open and closed systems. An open system is one whose borders allow the movement of energy and matter into and out of a system. So for example, typical example is if you've got a beaker of water where there's no lid, this is an open system. That means that it could rain into the beaker, we could pour water into it, or this could evaporate and evaporate right out of the beaker, okay? This is a closed system because all of the water and the water vapor is kept in the container itself. You can't actually escape from it and nothing can get into it either, okay? Nothing can get into it either. This is important. You cannot have dynamic chemical equilibria unless you have a reversible reaction, okay? So reversible reaction is a chemical reaction that can proceed in both the forward and reverse directions. And I've got a little, hang on, let me just erase all the writing here. Um, I've got a little picture here, a little diagram animation that shows reversible reactions. So what we have here is we have a molecule, calcium carbonate, which when dissolved breaks up the calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And you can see it happening in the background there. So calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are, then what can happen is when you heat it up, the carbon dioxide and calcium oxide can form calcium carbonate again. So you end up with this reversible reaction where multiples of these things are breaking up and reforming. And they don't have to be the same ones, okay? But that is dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium is when the rate at which the calcium carbonate is breaking up into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide is exactly the same as the rate at which these two are forming calcium carbonate. What you need to understand is dynamic equilibrium and this graph, okay. So let's say, for example, we have a reaction where we've got a container, okay. And into the container, we pump some hydrogen gas and some iodine gas. Okay, so after a while, it becomes that the hydrogen gas, which you need to understand, the hydrogen gas and iodine gas will immediately form some hydrogen iodide. Okay, in fact, one of these molecules and one of these molecules form two molecules of hydrogen iodide, okay? But the second that the hydrogen iodide is formed, it starts breaking up and forming hydrogen iodine, exactly like what happened in this video here. You had your calcium carbonate, it broke up immediately into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The minute that the calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are formed, they immediately start forming carbonates again, okay? So they will immediately reform. But dynamic equilibrium reach is reached when the rate at which they're forming and breaking up is the same. So now immediately some of the hydrogen iodide is going to go back and form hydrogen iodine. So 
what happens is because we were told that we had hydrogen iodine put in, we know that the forward reaction starts with lots of hydrogen iodide and we have a very fast rate of reaction because this is, please understand the most important thing about this section is reading the Y axis because you read to need to read all the y axis. In this case, we're looking at rates of reaction. So we're looking at the speed at which this reaction occurs. And obviously, since we've got lots of hydrogen, lots of iodine, we have a huge forward reaction happening of hydrogen iodine form hydrogen iodide. Now, like I said, the minute the hydrogen iodide is formed, what happens? It starts form hydrogen and iodine, okay? Now, initially, because there's very little of the hydrogen iodide, this reaction is going to be a bit slow. But eventually, this reaction is going to speed up and this reaction is going to slow down until you get to a point where we've reached dynamic equilibrium. And at that point, your hydrogen plus your iodine is in dynamic equilibrium with your hydrogen iodide. That means your hydrogen iodide is breaking up to form hydrogen and iodine at exactly the same rate that the hydrogen and iodine are breaking up to form hydrogen iodide. So this is a dynamic equilibrium graph and you need to know that the forward reaction is always the one that comes from the top. Why? Because that's the stuff you started with. So you start off with a very high reaction rate and then you slow down. This, you start the reverse reaction. We started zero because we initially had no product and then it speeds up and then you get to a point where you're ending up with dynamic equilibrium. Have a great day.